this may be the biggest news in GPU history and your power supply might not be big enough for the next generation graphics cards. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. So recently an absolutely huge announcement was made over on Twitter by a company that we haven't seen in the GPU market for a very long time, and that company is 3DFX, and for some of you out there who maybe don't know who 3DFX is, well, uh, you know, there was actually a time back in the day where there were more GPU companies than just AMD and Nvidia, and one of those GPU companies that many people knew and loved was 3DFX, and they made a bunch of cards like the Voodoo cards, and so a lot of people really loved them, but unfortunately Unfortunately, at one point in time, uh, they just made a couple of mistakes. They got into some hot water when it came to their financials, and eventually they ended up selling off to Nvidia, which of course raises some questions about the legality as well as the legitimacy of some of these claims coming from what is supposedly the official 3DFX Twitter page uh, about them potentially coming back and making GPUs. Because yeah, that's what we're talking about, guys, here, is that yeah, there could potentially, if this does turn out to be true, which again, we will talk about in a little bit, whether or not I do believe this is going to turn out to be true, but if it is true, yeah, we could be talking about another company jumping into the GPU race, so we could be having not only Nvidia and AMD, but also Intel and 3DFX coming back to all have a huge party when it comes to the GPU market, and I think we desperately need this, guys, because prices have gotten absolutely out of control, especially if you take a look at GPUs that should be in the quote-unquote entry level, such as the RTX 3060 and 6600 XT, which, you know, those GPUs are just so overpriced, it's gotten so ridiculous that yes, we need more people like 3DFX to jump into this, so hopefully this does turn out to be true, but let's go ahead and read what they had to say about it, and then I'll give you my thoughts, and we'll read uh, about what happened to 3DFX, and whether or not this could actually turn out to be true, and then, of course, we'll talk about the RTX 4090, and whether or not your power supply is going to be able to handle it. But in any case, uh, if we go over to Twitter, we can see that 3DFX actually originally made this post that got everyone really, really excited. So they posted an image, and along with it, they said 3DFX Interactive is coming back 20 years later. Prepare for a major announcement regarding a return this Thursday. So yeah, that's coming up really soon here, but then they actually followed up with two other posts recently where they had this to say. Do you all want to see a new 3DFX Voodoo card? And of course, most people said yes. And then finally, they followed up by posting their latest latest thing over on actually just 12 hours ago it looks like as of the recording of this video where they posted an image of what appears to be all their old GPU boxes and they said quote miss these we're bringing them back too and I find this very interesting because as we're going to discuss in just a second here uh, I believe Nvidia actually has the rights to all the brand names uh, that originally were owned by 3DFX so I'm not entirely sure if they can legally actually bring all these brand names back that's something that's very interesting though and if they can I think a lot of people are going to be very excited excited to see these GPUs and these names coming back. But in any case, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, is, as exciting as this is and as much as I desperately want this to be true, is this actually true? Could 3DFX come back? And if so, on Thursday, are we going to be seeing some new GPUs out of 3DFX? And what is this going to mean for the GPU market? I mean, this could be absolutely huge. Uh, but in order to answer this question, let's first go ahead and go back to an article that was originally posted all the way back in 2002 over on the website CNET, where they actually discussed the the whole buyout of 3DFX from NVIDIA, and then we'll kind of get a good idea of whether or not 3DFX can actually come back and make products. So according to CNET, quote, graphics chip maker NVIDIA bought out one-time rival 3DFX Interactive on Friday, another landmark in the consolidation of the graphics hardware industry. Under the terms of the agreement, NVIDIA will give 3DFX $70 million in cash and 1 million shares of common stock for the patents, brand names, and current inventory relating to 3DFX graphics chip business. In addition, a patent infringement suit between the two companies will be dismissed when the transaction is closed. 
NVIDIA will not acquire 3DFX's graphics board business. So yeah, after reading that, it definitely raises some red flags to this whole Twitter posting coming from the what is supposedly official 3DFX uh, Twitter handle because uh, it kind of seems like some of the stuff that's outlined in the CNET article would actually make it uh, so that some of the stuff that 3DFX is saying over on Twitter might not necessarily be true. Now, it's not entirely impossible that 3DFX uh, couldn't come back. You know, it's possible they could, and they could potentially make GPUs maybe under another name or something. There may be some legal way of getting around it in doing that. Uh, however, it does seem like it would be very difficult, and I'm not entirely sure if they can. Now, like it mentioned in the article, it looks like NVIDIA did didn't acquire 3DFX's graphics board business. So again, that does lend some credence to the ability for them to do something, but I'm just not entirely sure if they can bring back brands such as Voodoo. Uh, I'm not even entirely sure if they can even use the name 3DFX. I'm not a lawyer. I don't necessarily know all the specifics of this deal, uh, but you know, I'm, I just am not sure about this. I desperately want it to be true. I want 3DFX to come back and I want them to bring the Voodoo brands back, uh, but I just don't know if they can, honestly. Um, so um, I'm not entirely sure if on Thursday we're gonna actually see GPUs. I hope we do. I hope they start teasing some of that stuff, but maybe it's going to be something that we're not expecting and something that we don't necessarily want. So I don't want you guys to get your hopes up too high, uh, but either way, I do think this is very exciting and I do hope that it does turn out to be true. But now let's go ahead and talk about the RTX 4090 and 7900 XT and why your power supply might just not be beefy enough to handle them. So, you know, just last week, I decided to go ahead and kind of, you know, ask some questions over on Twitter, just to kind of throw it out in the ether. I was like, you know, hey, if the 7900 XT ends up having like 15,000 shaders and 256 megabytes to 512 megabytes of infinity cache on it, it's gonna have, you know, higher IPC and all this crazy stuff. I mean, just how big is this die really going to be and you know with a 256 bit bus only once again is that even up to 512 megabytes of infinity cache really going to be enough to alleviate all this potential bandwidth issues it could run into and i wasn't expecting this thing to really blow up but it kind of did blow up it got a bunch of likes and retweets and there was just a bunch of leakers who ended up replying to it and two of those leakers are well known would be a uh, cop 87 kimi as well as graymon 55 and they replied by saying uh in response to someone else like that 400 watts wouldn't be enough. I think Cop 87 Kimi originally said 400 watts wouldn't be enough for like the RTX 4090, which uh, got a lot of people just thinking, wow, this is absolutely insane if it's going to draw over 400 watts. And then Graymon55 ended up coming in and saying he probably expected it to be between 450 watts and 500 watts, which is just absolutely insane. And they have kind of mentioned this before, at least Graymon55 has, but you know, with these two leakers uh, kind of saying the same thing with these just absolutely ridiculous specs going out there, I think you're just going to have to get used to, well, these high-end GPUs are probably going to be not only very powerful, but they're probably also going to be very expensive, which is really unfortunate to see that the GPU market just keeps trending upwards in terms of price. And hopefully, if enough of us start to reject these prices, at least the entry level and mid-range can stop going up in price and start to go back downwards. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like that's the way things are going right now. And then on top of that, it looks like they're also going to draw a lot of power because I've been seeing a lot of people talking about these things drawing like over 400 watts. I definitely wouldn't be surprised when it comes to NVIDIA because it looks like we're talking about a monolithic design with the RTX 4090 once again, whereas AMD is going to be using a multi-chip module design, which could allow them potentially to save a little bit more on power. But when it comes to NVIDIA, yeah, I think this thing is going to draw over 400 watts. And as Paul from Not an Apple Fan has said many times, uh, yeah, I don't think that they made that you know special connector for the RTX 30 series. I think they made it for the RTX 40 series because we got to remember, NVIDIA knows a lot more than many other people do. So they probably knew that AMD had something really really special with the RX 7000 series and knew that they would have to just give it everything they had if they weren't ready with their own multi-chip module design, meaning that the RTX 4090 is going to have a crazy amount of shaders, a crazy amount of bandwidth, and it's going to need a crazy amount of power. So if you have like an 850 watt power supply and you're looking to get, an, you know, like a RTX 4090, well, even if it does end up drawing only 450 watts, which I say only, but that's a lot, and you have like an 850 watt power supply, you might think, well, that's enough, but you got to remember, even the RTX 3090 in some cases, depending on the setup, I was having peaks that would end up tripping like the overcurrent protection or overpower protection on these like 850 watt power supplies. You might need like a 1200 watt power supply or maybe even like a 1600 watt power supply, depending on what other things are in your system, as well as what the peak power draw of these cards is really going to be. And in fact, I wouldn't be too surprised they start making like special power supplies just for these graphics cards, just with that new connector, because yeah, 
Sounds like these things are gonna draw a lot of power. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that 3DFX is really coming back and how much power do you think the RTX 4090 is gonna draw? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.